cast-in-place, reinforced concrete channel. Uh, in addition to accomplishing the necessary structure repairs to the existing walls, uh, uh, the owner design will also have the structural capacity to construct a concrete cover to accommodate a future, future uh, bike pedestrian facility. The negotiated not to exceed fee for this work is $137,089, and it is expected to take approximately eight to nine months to complete, uh, depending on um, uh, how long it takes us to get through the regulatory permitting with the resource agencies. Um, and one of the interesting things is that uh, about 40% of the, this cost is for the permitting. So it's, uh, so the total cost of $137,000, 60% is for the engineering part, and 40% is, is working through the permitting requirements. Um, work, um, work necessary to acquire these permits, as well as other associated environment. Okay, I just said that. Uh, one final note, staff also requests the approval of a 5% contingency for unanticipated additional work. So staff is actually seeking authorization of $143,943. Uh, any additional work will require written authorization by the city manager prior to it being done. Thank you, Mike. Uh, any questions for Mike from Council? Councilman Whitmer. Sure. Um, when I was uh, in the channel, um, a couple of weeks ago with uh, with Steve, and uh, you know, I documented it in, the, in my little trip report. Um, there were parts of the channel, actually a, a fairly long stretch of the channel, that did not appear to be in need of repair. There were areas, obviously, that I highlighted that uh, definitely cry out for need, uh, and put an urgency on, let's get this thing going. Um, However, there were parts that uh, didn't appear, and, and actually my host uh, also felt that. Now, neither of us are structural engineers, um, but I did include some photos on that. So would one of the things that these guys would do in their design, um, would, they, would it be possible for them to reevaluate the full channel or parts that I guess the part that's closest to to uh, Middlefield Road to um, make sure that we actually need to replace that and if if not give us uh, I guess comments with regards to um, what the issues would be of leaving that because uh, you know looking on a pro rata basis it, it seems to me that the total $2.3 million, we could avoid something like maybe $800,000 if, if my assessments are correct. I spoke with the city manager about this uh, last week, and he indicated that that could be one of the things that we could put in there, and, and I thought that we were going to have that stated here in this um, staff report, but I don't see it. So um, I guess I asked the question, is that... A feasible thing because I think when we're talking millions of dollars and we can save three quarters of a million, that might that would be a prudent thing to do. Yes. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, um, I don't want to be a stick in the mud, comma, but um, one of the tenets of um, I, I'm kind of reading here parliamentary procedure is finality. The city council voted finally on a design proposal and gave a green light. It is absolutely inappropriate unless this council tonight votes in somebody in the majority, Mr. Whitmer was in the minority, um, could have voted, well actually it's too late now because it was two meetings ago. So it would be inappropriate tonight to even bring that up or as an issue. So the problem is we have already voted, we've already discussed and debated, and we've come to the end of that discussion, um, unless a majority, not a majority, two-thirds of, uh, of the council, so that all four people present, could vote to suspend the rule. And if they voted to suspend the rule, then you could reconsider. But you can't reconsider without a vote of all four people to reconsider, and it would require reconsideration because it was the 
option to a and it was final and it was for the entire channel i wasn't then. suggesting a box culvert at this point in time i'm not suggesting it i'm saying that the open channel part of the open channel does not appear to be in need of repair and it's a long stretch and so the the comment was and i brought it up to the city manager and he indicated that that was an option and he i, I actually thought that you know well he he said to me that that would be uh, potentially covered in the staff report. It said we don't need to potentially do the whole channel. Not changing the design, I realize that's a done deal. Not changing the design, but not doing the whole, the whole channel because it's not in need of repair. And so that would be a prudent thing to do, and that's the only thing I was asking the question. Unfortunately, my understanding and my experience sitting here over the last months is that that was part of the decision was to do both sides of the channel all the way down and the box culvert by design does both sides. It's well. I'm not talking about both sides. I'm talking about there's a stretch going down Middle Field Road that doesn't go all the way down the bay. So from bay moving north about two-thirds maybe three quarters of that of that channel does need to be repaired that last quarter maybe like a hundred a hundred yards or more I, you know I didn't measure it is very stable and doesn't need to be done so as opposed to doing the the cast in place for the whole stretch you do the cast in place for three quarters of it so I'm, excuse me through the chair I'm really confused because I thought that we had hired these consultants, these engineers, to evaluate the channel for us and give us a proposal for repairing and structurally enhancing the, the channel. The entire, I mean, I know I didn't go on your little trip with you. I wasn't invited. But you know what? I am not a structural engineer, and I wouldn't really know what I'm looking at if I was in the channel because I'm not that professional. We hired these professionals, and they evaluated it, and they didn't say, "Well, okay, we're going to piecemeal this." It doesn't. It, I'm. I'm just. I'm very puzzled as to what you're trying to do at this point because. Your opinion, your visual opinion, you're not, I, I just, it's, it, I'm sorry. Um, we have been discussing this <coughs> since over a year ago about this. There's been professional uh, analysis done, and we've hired and we've spent money on these consultants, and we made the decision. I don't, I don't understand why uh, at this time, just because you took a tour that you think that you know more than they do. Well, first off, I take strong exception to your comments. I'm okay. sorry. I'm, well, okay. I'm not no, trying I to have be the, I have the floor I'm just right now. To Excuse me. I have the floor. Well. I have the floor. Okay. I said from the beginning, I said from the beginning, I spoke with the city manager. He encouraged me to bring this up. I also said, could we ask the engineer yeah. during his final design to take one last look at that section and see if the whole channel needs to go? We did say in our RFP we wanted them to come up with design alternatives for replacing the whole channel. We didn't say, hey, come back and tell us whether or not we need to do the whole thing or not. So. Because it's a sub substantial amount of money, my comment is, in this final design phase of the cast in place, would it be possible for them to take a look and see if the whole channel needed to be done or not? And if it does, then that's fine. And that we would have the engineers do that. I didn't say, in fact, I even said, I'm not a design, en a, a structural engineer. And I said also, my host was not a structural engineer. However, we both agreed that it was something that should be looked in. That's all I brought up. All right? 
Mr. Mr. Mayor, um, to clarify. Uh, I, I understand Mr. Widmer's concerns, and I'm not against being fiscally conservative. Um, the problem is, it, the, the item 20 agenda is introduced quite well. It says, at the December 18th, 2013 meeting, the City Council chose option 2A, a cast-in-place concrete U-channel to repair a portion of the Atherton Channel adjacent to Marsh Road. And the City Council directed staff to negotiate a contract with BCA, Bricks Card, Bricks Card there, to proceed with design of option 2A. The only thing on the agenda, the only thing before the City Council, the only thing that's appropriate to even discuss tonight, I'm sorry, I, I can't be responsible for the city manager as he's trying to accommodate and, and be fair and appropriate. That isn't fair and appropriate under the, the rule of law that says it's final. You, you can only address it again if you get four, four votes of the city council to readdress it. Otherwise, staff is bound by what the city council has directed, and that is to go forward with the contract with Bricks Cardoza for the, the, the amount the, that they've said is in the channel. Okay, but the, the, the staff report says a portion of the channel. It Correct, doesn't, because it doesn't do the whole channel. So what I'm saying is when they're doing and evaluating and doing a final design for a portion, could they look at that portion and make sure that the, the full portion that we are preparing to do <coughs> fully needs to be done? I, I, think, I think it's consistent with the I staff I think we report. need to go back to the engineer and ask them if that was considered. I believe it was considered, and that's what we've said. We know they're not here. Well, no, was, our engineer is here. Oh, our engineer is here. And what I need is if, in fact, that was what the, the city council approved, then we're stuck with it. Right. Okay. It's not the entire channel so, that goes okay. up to Sand Hill Road. Right. No. So Reevaluation means reconsideration of the decision. Reconsideration requires four members of the city council to waive the rule and then to discuss after that. <laughs> Vice Mayor Begoya. No, go ahead. No, you, I, mine is more of a clarity because based on the design, and it's a U-channel design of the channel, our design is two walls and a deck, correct? And the integrity of that is to is what we, can, we were addressing when we were addressing it by council, so. That's correct. Okay. Simple. Council, Vice Mayor DeVolia. I don't have any questions for clarification. Okay, so it seems that we're at a point to go ahead and address, let's call it a motion. <coughs> oh, I apologize. I'm stepping on myself. Uh, public comments, please. I just have a question, and that is, so this is a designed contract, but uh, this company would not build it. Uh, there would be another request for proposal for construction? Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. Any other public comment? I apologize. Closing public comment, bringing it back to council. Final <coughs> comments. Uh, any council member with a final comment? Uh, seeing none. Uh, I think at this point we should uh, call for a motion. So move to approve a design contract with Big Cardoso Associate for the Marsh Road retaining wall repair in the amount of um, 210000 uh, from the special parcel tax. Authorize the city manager. Authorize the city manager to execute the contract as attached. I will second that motion. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? I oppose for the reasons that I stated. I don't think we need to do the whole channel, and I would have appreciated that somebody would. Okay. Thank you, Bill. Okay, so let's go ahead and close that item and move on to item number 21. Consideration for the council to approve a preparation of an RFP to analyze the roundabout at Atherton Avenue and Alameda de los Lopez. Community Service Director, Mike Desuagin. Uh, yes, and this item is uh, brought forward as a result at the request of the um, Transportation Committee at their January 14th meeting, and they asked the council to consider uh, issuing, developing an RFP for, uh, to evaluate the roundabout at Alameda de los Lopez. 
as your staff report indicates, uh, the cost to prepare the RFP <coughs> is estimated to be about $2,500 in staff time. And then um, the actual consultant cost to perform the work, um, we really haven't looked at in, in, in great detail, but it would probably be in excess of $25,000. Perfect. Uh, thank you, Mike. Uh, Vice Mayor Folio. Uh, so, your recommendation is that for a cost not to exceed twenty five hundred, we do an RFP to look at this assessment, look at the roundabout, right? Yes, that's not our recommendation. But that's our estimate of what what it would cost to develop a consultant, a a. Request for proposal for just consultant. to do the, the RFP. That's correct. Um, yeah, we uh, when this first came up and we decided not to proceed that for a number of reasons, one of which um, we had just gotten the budget approved and we didn't want to spend our total transportation committee allocation on one shot. Um, there was discussion about the benefit potentially of a, of a light that would blink and maybe could be programmable and things like that. And, and I think that we had said that if we were to look at this, that we would want that analysis done before we would decide to move forward with a design or whatever for a, a roundabout. Um, has anything gone on with that or do you still, could we, is that a, a possibility that we should go look at or? What was it? What's the situation? I, I don't recall a blinking light. I mean, this, the intersection is already a four-way stop. Right. So there's really no reason for a blinking light. Well, um, it would not be blinking. It would be. It could be what we, we talked about, and uh, was that <coughs> it'd be a regular during rush hour traffic, which is when the the, the transportation committee and Mr. Louder <coughs> had indicated there's long backups, and, and there are on all ends. So a light would make sure everybody gets their, gets their turn, but then during non-peak times, it could be back to just a blinking light where it would be back to the normal way. Okay, well, well, that would be a traffic signal. That yeah, so the traffic it signal, but it would be programmable so that it would not be obtrusive. Right, but, but the purpose of taking a look at a roundabout, a roundabout takes the, would take the place of a traffic circle because a roundabout the purpose it is it is also to control the movement of traffic mm -hmm. no, and, I understand and, and so um, you know really the, the purpose of this RP would be to determine whether or not a roundabout at that location would be feasible because roundabouts do take uh, more property mm -hmm. and and so that was, would really be the purpose of this uh, RP is to take a look at the feasibility and the cost and then at that point, the council can determine which would be preferred. But also, you know, we would also take into consideration if a traffic signal were warranted at that location at this point in time. And at this point in time, a signal is not warranted at that location. Uh, so, Mike, so, can you explain what warranted means? Because that's a yeah. term that's not generally understood by the public. Yes. What basically it's criteria. There is, there is, you know, nine criteria that that engineers throughout the state use to determine whether or not a traffic signal is an appropriate device and needed at an intersection. Um, and so, um, although we have not done a warrant study, because of the volume of traffic, the uh, history of accidents, we don't see an indication that a traffic signal would be uh, you know, warranted at this point. The roundabout is warranted? No, again, the roundabout is simply a, a different way of putting in a traffic signal. It, it basically functions the same. Um, I think that um, this this issue has been around a long time. We've been discussing it a long time, haven't we? <laughs> and to really figure out whether or not it's feasible because of property and space, the only way we're going to figure that out is through a study. And I think that's our only next step that is reasonable to do. Otherwise, everybody's going to continue to speculate about you know, how much it costs or how much it will take. And everybody else's 
property and stuff. And the term warranted, whether or not uh, a traffic light is warranted. I mean, uh, Caltrans uh, did the Selby Lane at ECR and they warranted that that's a stoplight. And whether or not we really want to put that in, that's a whole other thing. But um, I really think that this is a kind of a, a, a pretty low cost probe uh, going to the next step of a, actually a pretty low cost uh, consultant fee to really vet it out as to whether or not a roundabout is even, you know, remotely feasible in that location. And then we'd, uh, we'd have more information to, to go on. So I'm very, 